Today, we want to talk about what the Bible has to say about retribution and how it relates to our own lives. As we dig into our lesson today, we're going to explore what it means to be held accountable for our actions and how can we strive to live a life that is pleasing to God. So let's harvest today's lesson. Welcome. Life Systems Operational. Hey, welcome back. If you got your Bibles, if you got your Bibles out ready, do me a big solid favor. And if you will, turn to the book of Isaiah. We're going to go to chapter 34 and we're going to look at verse 8. And let's harvest Jehovah God's word together. And when you get there, you find these words. We're looking at the New International Version, and it reads, For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of retribution to uphold Zion's cause. Shalom, shalom, peace, 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 and blessings be upon each and every one of you all. Happy New Year's to everyone. Thank you for joining. Listen, I want to jump right into our lesson because we want to talk about this is uh, the year of retribution. 2023, it is the year of retribution. And so I want to get into our lesson real quick today. So in the Old Testament, uh, we see the idea of what we know or what we're familiar with, especially in the streets, and I for an eye, which suggests that people should be punished equally for the harm that they've caused, right? That's kind of how our justice system kind of is. Uh, that's kind of how people are. And in the New Testament, we see this concept of judgment where all people are going to be judged by God based on their actions and as well they're going to be rewarded or punished accordingly. So when we're we're talking about retribution, so you know, you know how I roll, you know how I do, we have to define and break down this word retribution. So retribution is the act of punishment or vengeance for a wrong or injury that has been committed. It is the idea that someone who has caused harm or damage to another person or group should be held accountable and punished somehow. It goes on to say that retribution is a way to achieve justice and to restore balance to a situation where harm has been caused. This is the year of retribution in the beginning of this season, because we've entered and crossed over into a new season based upon the Hebrew calendar. Uh, we are in the Hebrew year 5783, which uh, matches up with our Roman Gregorian calendar of 2023. But see, in the Hebrew, which we celebrate uh, here at HTC, we celebrate uh, our New Year's is in September when Rosh Hashanah comes. So we're kind of already in the year of retribution. We've been there since September. But I want to bring this to you all's attention since we've crossed over into a new grown, uh, Roman Gregorian calendar year of 2023. I want you to see and understand and be aware of what about is about to happen here uh, in this next seven year cycle. We're in a new seven year cycle. We're in a new season. And so beginning this cycle, it is going to be the beginning of a year of retribution. Watch this. And so what are you saying, Pastor K? What do you mean by this retribution? Well, simply this, God is sick and tired of being sick and tired of uh, people trying to 
take justice into their own hands, uh, their uh, their way of being uh, or initiating justice has really been unfair, one sided, if you will. And it's only been benefiting those who have been implementing the judgment. God says enough is enough. I'm going to show you how it's really done. I'm going to show you how divine judgment is coming. I'm going to show you how divine judgment should be. I'm going to show you how and I'm going to put things back onto a level playing field, if you will. Just as the definition here says, uh, God is about to achieve justice and restore balance. Mm -hmm. He's about to restore balance to situations where it has been unjust for so long. Listen, uh, this is the year of retribution. Uh, so y'all know how I do. I like to, I'm learning Hebrew. Uh, so in the Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet is Gimel. G-I-M-E-L, Gimel. Uh, and Gimel, uh, it is the word, it's a word, it's a Hebrew word that is derived uh, from the root that means justified repayment. So the word Gimel, it is derived from the root a uh, Hebrew word that means justified repayment or the giving of reward and punishment. You see, the letter Gimel resembles, it looks like a foot, kind of like a boot, but it kind of resembles a foot and a person walking towards the left. And so this Hebrew letter Gimel, it also represents the number three. We're in 2023. This is the year of Gimel or the year of retribution, the year of reward and punishment. So not only is this a year of reward and punishment or the year of retribution, 2023, uh, it is also a jubilee year. What's a jubilee year, Pastor K? Basically, a jubilee year, it is a time of celebration. Anytime that you encounter a, a cycle or a season of 50 years, that is considered a jubilee year. Now, let me help you out. Kind of break this down a little bit for you, just for the sake of time. Uh, you see, Based upon the Hebrew calendar, God operates in seven year cycles. So for every seven years, seven times seven is 49. So 2022 or the Hebrew year 5782, that was the 49th year. So now we have hit the 50th year in 2023 or in the Hebrew year 5783. It is also a Jubilee year. And in this Jubilee year, it is going to be an awesome time of celebration. Why? Because God is about, he's about to unleash some things upon the earth that if you ain't on his side, you in trouble. And if you're on his side, if you're on his team, get ready because we're going to celebrate and we're going to be rejoicing because God is about to restore everything that the caker worm has taken. He's about to restore and set the balance. He's about to re, uh, he, he's about to do some things. Oh man, I'm, I'm just so excited about this year. Uh, and not just this year, but how it's beginning, because the next seven years, as they begin to unfold, they're going to be the most uh, awesome years for the saints, for the church. Y'all got to get ready. 2023 is the Jubilee year. Uh, simply put, it is the birth of a new season. We have 
entered into a new season. The, it is the completion of the seven year cycle, uh, which is seven times seven, that equals 49. And this is the 50th year or a golden jubilee year. And so I believe and I feel, uh, I feel that in this season, it is going to be an awesome beginning an awesome se season and an awesome next seven years for uh, the church. And I also believe in this season, a great revival is going to take place. I believe that this great revival, it is inevitable in this season, meaning it's bound to happen. It's going to happen. And I also sense that this great revival that is inevitably uh, going to happen, it's going to happen one or two ways. It's either going to happen through repentance. And the Bible tells us if they pray to Jehovah Rapha and repent and turn away from the evil they've been doing, then what will he do? He will hear them in heaven, forgive their sins and make their land prosperous again. So, there's a great revival coming and it's either going to come either by repentance or it's going to come through judgment. For the Lord is coming out from his place to judge the people of the world for the bad things they have done. The murders secretly committed on the earth will be revealed and the ground will no longer hide those who have been killed. Judgment or repentance, one way or the other, a great revival is going to happen in this season. And so also what we need to do in this season uh, and in this new seven year cycle, in this Jubilee year, we need to get ready and get prepared. Get prepared for what, Pastor K? Well, I want you to be prepared because also God is not only going to reset or uh, as we said uh, earlier, uh, he's going to uh, restore the balance mm -hmm. and he's going to achieve judgment and restore balance. Mm, he's doing it's like the scales it, 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 it's for so long. They've been offset. God says, I'm tired of y'all stacking up stuff to, to, to the wealth of the wicked has been laid up and it's, it's been laid up for the just long enough. God says, I'm about to tip the scales. And not only am I going to tip them into my children's favor, but I'm going to tip the scales and I'm going to restore the balance and I'm going to achieve judgment. And how am I going to do this? By punishment and reward all at the same time. So also we need to be ready because there's going to be some exposure. You need to prepare for the exposing that you're about to see. You need to prepare yourself for the exposing that's already been happening since Rosh Hashanah, since the Hebrew New Year. You see, this new year, it will begin the exposure of agreements that will result in divine judgment. 2023 will be a year concerning God's complete justice, a judgment or reward, uh, my, excuse me, uh, a judgment of reward and punishment. He's going to set the scales right. He's going to put balance back into the earth. Now, depending on which side of this retribution you own, you might want to check your walk. You might want to check where you are because the, the prophet Amos, he asks a question and he says, how can two walk together unless they what? Agree. And so I believe or in other words, the prophet is asking this question. How can two people walk together without compromising the direction? I want to go to the left, but God says go to the right. I want to I want to uh, 
uh, I want to be on the reward side, but based upon uh, my relationship with God and the things that I've been doing in my life, uh, I'm really on the side of judgment. And, and, and I, I want to be on, I think I'm on the reward side, but when God looks at the intent and the motives of your heart, how are they selfish or are they selfless? I need y'all to hear me today. So in other words, uh, who are you in agreement with? Who is it that you are uh, partnered up with and in agreement with? Is it society or is it God? Because see, if it's society, then society or the God haters, they at the moment, they're living it up. They're plotting to do God's people in. Uh, they're conspiring to rob God's people of, of his precious ones. And, and then they go on and in their minds and in their hearts, their motive is to wipe this nation, meaning God, any and everything that has to do with Elohim, God, the creator, any and everything that has to do with Jehovah God, they want to wipe it off the face of the earth and so they say scratch Israel's name off the books and now they're putting their heads together they they're they're plotting they're planning they're scheming and together they're making plans to get rid of almighty God any and everything that has to do with God they want to get rid of it they want to do away with it uh, no matter what it is, no matter, uh, no matter the principle, no matter the purpose, uh, whatever the case may be, you, you have Christians who have, who are falling away or falling off from the faith because, uh, they are following other things and they are in agreement with something else that lines up, not with what God says, but it's lining up. And it's pleasing to their flesh because it's something they want to do. They it's a behavior that they want uh, to interject. And so rather than dealing with the root cause of it, they just want to accept it as is and, and flaunt it because it's the thing to do. Listen, if the agreement contradicts God's word, if it contradicts the Bible in any way, expect exposure and open punishment because the Bible says no matter how shrewdly he conceals his malice, eventually his evil will be exposed in public. Now, if the agreement confirms and it lines up with God's word, it lines up with what the Bible says, expect exposure and open reward. But when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Put this in your notes. God will reward and judge each of us according to what we've done. Now, once you understand and you've prepared for the exposure, let me give you uh, five declarations that I, I feel is going to, uh, God is going to do in this season. The first one is this. I want to encourage you and I want to declare and decree that we who've been on the battlefield, those of us who've been on the front lines, we have to keep moving forward with Jehovah God. As the, as the cloud moves, as the pillar of fire moves by night, and the cloud moves by day. As God is moving, we have to move with him. When God stops, we stop. We have to keep moving forward with Jehovah God. We got to keep trusting God even in this season, in this year. Let go of what is familiar. 
We let go of our plans when we experience loss or things don't work out as we hoped. So we've gotten familiar or we get we become uh, familiarized or or we fall into the familiarity with people and things and we we expect it. Uh, oh, I know they're going to do this. Uh, I know they're going to say this, uh, whatever, whatever. But then when it doesn't go the way that we plan, we just throw up our hands. We throw in the towel and, and, and we just stop. We stop. We just let it go. When God doesn't move the way that we want him to move, when God doesn't move when we want him to move, uh, we want to throw in the towel and say, oh, God has failed me. God let me down. No, he ain't. You did. You the one that walked away. He's still there. You the one who wanted it to go this way. And God was telling you, no, just wait and be patient and just hold on just a little while longer because I'm still working things out and, and I'm about to get you to the, the, the threshold of the door and I'm about to open the door of opportunity. If you can just hold on and outlast that opposition, but no, the opposition has gotten too great. You're tired of fighting. You're tired of the opposition. You're tired and, and, and you're sick and tired. And so now you just throw your hands up and you quit. And at the very moment when the enemy causes you to quit, he knocks you out, knocks you down, and then exposes and shows the opportunity that if you would have just held on a little while longer. Sometimes we walk away without fully understanding what's next. Scripture says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Keep moving forward with Jehovah God. Number two, <clears throat> nothing that you've gone through, nothing that you went through this past season has been wasted. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care how you fix it up. I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you dress it down. Nothing that you've gone through in this past season has been wasted. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, uh, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. The apostle Paul, the tenacious tent maker from Tarsus goes on and he says, for when I am weak, then I am strong or made strong in Christ. Everything that you've been through this past season, everything that you've gone through, it qualifies you to go to a new realm of faith, new levels and power of authority in Christ. Also, in this season, you will go to new dimensions of blessings. Biblical blessings, uh, it is a believer, or it's described as a believer as being in a desired position for receiving God's provisions or his favor, an extension of his grace. Overall, the dimensions of blessings can be, uh, they, they can vary widely depending on the content in which they are given and received. Did y'all catch that? Dimensions of the blessings vary depending on the context in which they are given and received. And they may be spiritual, emotional, practical, or physical in nature. Number three, no sacrifice that you've made for Jehovah God and for his kingdom will go unnoticed. Sacrifices that you made in 2022 for the kingdom of God and for God, they will not go unnoticed. Sacrifices today are in reality opportunities, the same as they always have been. Remember, remember the promise that the Savior made? He said, Jesus said, and you won't regret it. No one 
who has sacrificed home, spouse, brothers, sisters, parents, children, whatever, will lose out. It will all come back multiplied many times over in your lifetime. And the bonus, eternal life. So that your deeds of charity may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. It will not go unnoticed. So today, as well as in the past, sacrifices brings forth heaven's blessings. Number four, no seed sown from your heart, not from uh, not from out of ritual duty, not out of, uh, oh, let me just do it because it's the norm to do. No, no, no. No seed that has been sown from the motive or the intent of your heart in faith has fallen on dry soil. Your harvest is sure. You see, everything in life, everything that Elohim God, the creator, has created, it starts with a seed. Well, Pastor K, uh, he created heavens and the earth. He created, yeah, because he spoke it. His spoken word was the seed that he released into the atmosphere and it happened. Everything in life starts with a seed. Whatever we see manifested in the world and our life it began with a seed and every seed planted must be received by faith for you see when we sow a seed and we put it in god's hands and we watch god graciously and mercifully send the miracle we need based on our faith faith is the confident expectancy confident enough to put my trust my hope put oh i'm confident in my faith to put all my eggs in god's basket i don't put all my eggs in my basket i don't put a part of them in mine i don't put a couple in lady z's i don't put a couple in my kids basket no 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 i, I don't put them in 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 in, in, in other people no, no no all my trust my hope my faith everything i put it in god's basket i put it in god's hands because i have the confident expectancy that he will do exactly what he said he will do as long as the earth lasts as long as the earth remains planting harvesting coal heat summer and winter day and night will never stop let us not grow weary in well doing or in doing good for in due season this is your due season we will reap if we do not give up who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and not even not just stop there at supplying but he will supply and multiply your seed from sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness the lord taught me something he taught me that if the seed of faith if it's planted in fertile rich if it's planted in the right soil of the heart watered with his word and it's kept in the sunshine not the s-u-n but the s-o-n shine it will multiply five y'all to hear this we're in the year of retribution is going to set things straight he's going to bring justice restore balance Reward and punishment is coming. Depending on which side of this retribution you own, I hope you're ready. I hope you're on the right side. I hope you're on the winning team, which is Jehovah God. Because you see, 
every settlement Jehovah God will settle in your favor. Every settlement, every every settlement, any and everything that has people who have wronged you, people who are wronging you, people who are doing you wrong, people who uh uh they 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 scammed you out of this that and the other people who uh legally your legal settlements uh god says listen okay they done play games long enough they've been stringing you along they've been stringing my my people along long enough i'm about to step into this thing and i'm about to really tip the scale in the favor of my children and after i tip the scale then i'm gonna set I'm going to reset the scale and it's going to be justice and it's going to be balanced like I want it the way that I designed it. Listen, every settlement Jehovah God will settle in your favor. What are you saying, Pastor K? Well, when you look at our lesson uh, scripture, I want you to see this from the message Bible. It says this, it's God's scheduled time for vengeance the year all zion's accounts are settled Mm -hmm. jehovah god will settle every settlement in our favor because of his love and his faithfulness for us and he keeps his promises as in his word i will yes i will bless the lord and not forget the glorious things that he has done for me He forgives all my sins. He heals me. He ransoms me from hell. He surrounds me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Listen, we can trust that no matter what our challenges and difficulties are going to be that we face in 2023 and beyond, we know that God works for our good and will ultimately settle everything in our favor. How is that so, Pastor K? Because he says, the Apostle Paul, the tenacious tent maker from Tarsus, he says in Romans, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Tribution powerful concept that is found throughout the Bible. It reminds us that God is a just and fair God who holds us, humanity, accountable for our actions and that we will be either rewarded or punished. Believers, as disciples and followers of Christ, we must remember that we're called to live according to God's laws and treat others with kindness and compassion. We have to realize and understand that when we do wrong, it's vital for us to confess our sins, seek forgiveness. If you've wronged somebody, it's essential for us to extend grace and forgiveness just as God extended grace and forgiveness to us someone wrongs you it's very essential for you to extend grace and forgiveness to them and when others wrong you you still need to extend grace and forgiveness but god said vengeance is mine he says i'll i'll do the repaying See, you don't have to go get vengeance. You don't have to continue to live in the Old Testament, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Uh, I'm going to get you back. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold this. I'm going to put this uh, on my scorecard, and, and I'm keeping record of every time you've mistreated me. And when the time comes for me to get you back, I'm going to get you back. No, 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 no. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to pray for those who use, mistreat, and abuse you. You're supposed to love and forgive. We're supposed to turn the other cheek 
I know you only got to do what he told the disciples. How many times am I supposed to forgive somebody who keeps doing the same thing? 70 times 70. You just keep on forgiving them. Well, well Pastor K, I'm tired of forgiving them. I'm tired, man. I'm tired of Okay. What if God says the same thing about you? Or if he say he tired of forgiving you? What if he what if he tired of putting up with your mess? What if he tired uh, of telling you to, to do something that you've been procrastinating, which is disobedience in slow motion, and and you just been oh, da, 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 da. what if he said enough is enough? I'm tired of it. No extended grace, no more extended mercy. I'm at my close. Here's my conclusion. I'm going to continue to. Uh, unpack some more of the year of retribution uh, throughout the year. So y'all be ready. Be prepared. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and if you're new to the channel, go ahead. You need to subscribe. You need to uh, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the, the upcoming episodes and, and things that we're getting ready to do on the channel this year. And also be on the lookout as I'm getting ready to uh, rebrand and revamp my personal channel. Uh, and I want y'all to be on the lookout and get ready for that as well. But listen, in conclusion, let us remember that God is a God of retribution and that our actions, good or bad, consequences. Life is choice driven and the choices that we make, the decisions that we make, they're long lasting and life changing. So the things that we do, whether good or bad, the intent of your heart, whether it's selfish or selfless, is consequences. We must strive to live a life that is pleasing to God, that reflects his love and grace to those around us. I say Shalom Baraka, Shana Tova, peace, blessings, and here to a great year. Kelvin Dunn, Senior Lead Pastor and Founder of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, located in the heart of Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. I say Shalom Baraka, peace and blessings to each and every one of you. In the meantime, in between time, till the next time. Attention book lovers. Are you ready for a transformative read in 2023? Opposition Releases Opportunity is the perfect book for you. In my book, it reveals the power of facing and overcoming challenges in your life. Through powerful scripture, and practical advice, you'll learn how to turn obstacles into opportunities for both growth and success. So don't let the opposition hold you back any longer. Get your copy of Opposition Releases Opportunity today and discover the limitless potential that Elohim, God the Creator, placed within you available in paperback and e-book form.